Well, welcome back to another episode of Paint Society. In this episode, we're gonna give you some of the techniques you're going to need to be able to blend paint in the smallest of areas. Don't overthink it, it's just paint. And thanks for joining me on this episode. My name is Brian, and on this episode, we're really gonna dive deep into how do we pull off a blend in a smaller area? What are some of the techniques we're gonna use? And what are some of the materials that are gonna help us, well, make it look like it's never been painted? So let's dive right into it. Now, taking a look at this project, the hood has already been resprayed, and we are blending and doing some repairs on the fenders. We only have this amount of color to blend into. This right here matches the door. So we do not want to bring color to this edge. Otherwise, our color, even though it's the same paint code, B95P, well, there could be a variance, a difference between the door and the fender. So what we're going to go over today is a little bit about reverse blending, how we're going to lose our blend in a small area, and how we are going to make this color and our new color look exactly the same. Let's go into the mixing room and start off with our first material. First, we're gonna be using a transparent base coat, a base coat with no pigment. Now, to make things easy for you, I'm gonna link a couple in the description so that you can get it for yourself. This is gonna mix for me one-to-one, -one, but it's always important to check the technical data sheets to see how your clear base coat will mix. There's a few different names for this. They call it clear base, an orientation coat, inner coat clear. They're all the same thing. Basically, it's a clear base coat that's going to assist in the blending process. So let's apply this coating to our fender. We'll be using our DB1 base coat gun and we'll apply it around 15 PSI. Now, the surface here has been sanded with a P600 and we'll use this intercoat clear orientation or blending additive as it has many names to provide a nice smooth finish as a visual aid and to help our base coat land just a little bit smoother. It's very simple. We'll apply it just like base coat. And there's no need to worry about any color difference here, so you can go all the way to the edge. Since this is 100% transparent, it will not darken the color, but be careful. Only apply one coat. This will dry semi-flat. Give it about a good five minutes. And after five minutes, it will look like this. Now, the reason why we're not using a sealer is because, well, we don't have that room for sealer. So what we did is I prepped this a little bit better because the primer's prep was 600 grit, it's a little bit finer. Usually I can do a little bit quicker and leave it in like a P320 and then just seal over it. So a little bit more refining. Now the reason why we put this clear base over also, it's just a thin layer of protection between the primer and the base coat. And it sometimes it prevents little fry ups or little things like that, but don't expect a whole lot out of it. Now what we're gonna be doing is using a reverse blend technique. And what pretty much what a reverse blend is, is basically we are going to go all the way to the furthest point of where our blend would be. And then we're gonna work in steps moving towards the front of the fender. So basically what that does is it helps out in smaller areas because we're not consistently moving the blend over and getting too close to where our tape area is. So let me show you how we do that. So whenever I do some sort of reverse blend like this or any blend in a small area, I'll never take the paint gun and move all the way across. I'm always gonna be at a diagonal and the diagonal is gonna help me keep it away from this area. I also wanna talk about how far you pull this trigger. I'm only gonna be pulling it about a quarter of the way. So basically, if you pull it all the way, you're gonna get a lot of overspray. It's gonna go in different areas that you don't want it to, to go to. So you wanna control it. So basically, we're gonna just, take our blend all the way to the end, and then in the next two or three coats till we get full coverage, we'll fill in this area. I'm also gonna lower my pressure to around 13, so a little bit less overspray. And I'm gonna work that blend area first, because we want this area to match. So 
So basically what we have done is we have done our blend already. So we're not gonna worry about coming this far. You can see you spray it nice and wet. Now we can concentrate on the front half and the second and third coat or however many coats it takes to cover this will end around here and we won't keep pushing the color this far. Once again, I like to use sort of an X pattern when it comes to blending in smaller areas. Also another tip, do not stack your coats. Don't put on two and three and four coats right away. On transparent colors, guys, allow this color to flash. When it flashes, it's gonna build a nice surface for your next uh, coat to go on top instead of sinking into. We can see we did our best to keep the overspray away from the tape, but you're gonna get a little bit here and there. That's overspray, it's not gonna be a big, big deal, but you wanna reduce the amount of overspray in this area because if you take your color all the way to the edge, you're not gonna match your door. After 10 minutes, the fender has flashed and it's ready for the second coat, a base coat. With this coat, we're gonna stop midway through the fender instead of extending it all the way towards the door area. Since the reverse blend has helped us out and the blend is already done and looks great, we can focus on just getting coverage in the area where our primer was. You can see how it's nice and wet towards the middle and towards the back, it's completely dry. We'll continue this for the third coat and this third coat should give us enough coverage so that all of our primer has been completely covered. It's always a good idea to use that X pattern to really control the paint and remember, trigger that trigger lightly. Do not press it completely because you get too much overspray. You can see here we're using the Astro Sunlight and checking for any coverage issues. If we have any primer showing, then we're gonna to wanna to apply at least one to two more coats on the whole entire fender where the blend was. You can see here we're ready for our clear coat, so we're gonna be applying our clear coat around 75 to 80% overlap. I'm using the Walcom Carbonaro right here, around 25 PSI. When you're spraying clear coat, you wanna allow about 10 minutes between flash times just to allow that first coat to really tack up. So by the time the second coat goes on, it's going to stick to it very well and you'll be able to apply it much thicker. Now it's also a very good idea to make sure that you buff the doors. This car is over 20 years old and although the color will perfectly match, the clarity of the clear coat will be slightly different and can sometimes give the appearance that the colors do not match. So definitely go over the doors with a buffer with a good all-in-one purpose cleaner, wax cleaner, or just a polish. You can see here it looks absolutely stunning and well, our blend turned out perfect. Guys, this is Brian from Paintside reminding you, don't overthink it, it's just paint. See you guys on the next one.